to our 71st Amuna class. We're so excited to be here together with you. We have our wonderful guest, uh, let's say. Uh, Michael Aharon. Hi. Michael Aharon in the house with Rav Dine Elgood making a special appearance to join us live on the 71st of Muna class. We're so excited to make this happen in our studio in Yushalayim together with the blessing of Rav Sholem Arish Shlita. We pray and continue to wish him only healing, Rav Shlema, Rav Sholem Ben Yamna. And we go ahead dedicating this class to the 41 soul, 45 souls of Miron. We wish it was less. Unfortunately, of 45 souls last year, Lagbomer 2021, um, 5781, I, I believe, passed away at the Osan that happened at the Miron Lagbomer event. And we hope this year for only good news, we dedicate to the souls and all the families and also to the legacy of Rav Zachariah Wallerstein Zatzal. And we welcome all our guests, healthy, good news to the Holy Land, to our online classes. Specifically, Michael Aaron and his family, the Yosef Aaron and the Aaron family, who brought Michael originally to our class in, when was it? You remember? January? Somewhere around sure, there. Maybe. You remember? The Rav members? It was, I think it was actually in the summer months. No, no wasn't, way. Wasn't that far? I, I moved in July, and this was much after. Oh, you're right. Yes, it was a cousin class in the middle of the winter, and I was blessed to be in his home in a frat. That's where we're coming from. And we're going to have a very, very special card. You dedicate to the blessing of his family and to all our special guests, all our Muna staff. Everyone should have success and good health. And it's like Ba'oma should be a time of salvation and Basoyus Tovus Amen. Amen. Only good news. So we're also doing this for the full healing to be rid of Corona. Would you believe there's still places in shutdown? I can't believe I'm still <sighs> hearing online. And there's still people getting it. It obviously hasn't ended completely. We wish everyone a full Rafur Shlema. We dedicate Tila Rifka Bas Mash Rafur Shlema, Chana Bas Frida. And these classes are for the elevation to the pure soul. Gedalia's son, Havda Ben Chaim Lachaim, Yerach Madonna Ben Gedalia. We appreciate your dedication to our Muna classes, to the Rav's teachings. We wish everyone a good week. A happy Pesach Shani today. Happy Pesach. Yeah, we say that? Yes. <laughs> okay, Pesach Shani, a second chance. The Rav says we say that. Good news, Lag Baoma this year. Healthy, energized spring to summer days. This is this in between time, counting up towards Shavuot. Sphere with Amuna. Everyone should keep sharing Amuna Global like we did last week. And I let you know the promoting class, thank God, has already got over 34,000 views on Facebook and YouTube as well. Another bunch of views, and we appreciate it. Good job, you guys, for sharing it and making the Amuna promotions real in real time. We welcome your ideas. You can listen to the class again to get some clarity on what's available nowadays of all the promotional opportunities. And we go ahead now with our feedback. Schlepping Nachas. People are still enjoying that class. Pauline, Nicoli, Brok Hashem, very nice. Someone else wrote, happy today. Power to the positive people. I think this was on last week's class. Amuna is now. Thank you, Rabbi. Good Shabbos. Good week to you and your family. Hang in there. This unity issue is just getting started and lots of love. Keep up the good work. Beautiful background. I think that was for me last week. I did my class in Bat Yam. Thank you for taking the time to inspire us weekly. Yeah, it was. thank God I was able to do work from there as well. Feedback coming in. Someone's requesting the full band, the full Live Aid story. Shalom, Rabbi and Mr. Goldsmith and Rabbi Elgar from Sydney, Australia. I'm happy your father is with you, Rabbi. You three guys, I mean, we could call the rabbi a guy, but the, <laughs> including the rabbi. It's okay, I'm great. a guy. <laughs> Thank you. So far, so good. They said they were great. All the way from Australia. Isn't that amazing? Um, so anyway, so that was the feedback. Obviously, it was a successful class, and we continue to hope that, that we keep generating successful class with Rabbi Arish's blessing. Thank you, Hashem, for everything you give us. All our team, MC, Rev. Diane Algrad, to lead the previous and coming classes. Thank God for these classes and our guests. Such great energy, sincere soul, smiles, and talents. Let's go. Okay. That's it. So what should we do, Rob? We have a singer. Yeah. To get to a song? I think we should start with a song. Okay. I'm so okay just, with a song. Yeah, let's introduce yourself, please. All Michael right. Michael Aaron. Uh, my name is Michael Aaron. Uh, I recently moved, what? Oh, this way. Okay, fine. <laughs> I recently moved about 10 months ago from uh, Boca Raton, Florida. I now live in Efrat. And um, 
when I used to live in Florida back in Cat's Hill Day School, we used to uh, do davening with certain tunes and we did Tehillim 150 with a certain tune that my entire family loved and we began to add English lyrics to Tehillim 150 to make it more inclusive, if you will. So I'm going to be singing uh, Tehillim 150 with a bit of English lyrics. Um, so can I get started? Or? Yeah, you go. You go. All right. Mike's yours. Perfect. Mike's got Hallelujah. the mic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Bekor Shah. Hallelujah, Birkiauzo. Oh, Hallelujah, Big Vuotsav. Hallelujah, Kerov. Good law. Laina, Ina. Hallelujah, Beteka. Shofa. Hallelujah, Never Vecino. Oh, Hallelujah, betofu machol, hallelujah, beminim, veugav, la inai nai. Music is the way we pray and give to a shem. The sound comes from our hearts up to the heavens. Far more beautiful is the song of our neshama when we sing. To Hashem our King, la ina ina, la la na na na, la la na na na, la na la la na na na, la la na 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 na, la na na la la na na na, la la na na na, la na na na. When we sing to Hashem our King. Wow, what a great start to the class! Beautiful, Michael. You're very brave. To come here Thank alone you. and sing without any backing or anything. It's beautiful. Yes, very, very nice. And of course, we're doing this because it's Fiesa Omer, so we can only use vocal songs. Of course. We can't have any. We do have a Heta, but we're, you know. We have a Heta here in the studio, but we're not using it yet no, because no, no. we are being more cautious. I'm all right with and, and vocal And Be'ezrat anyway, Hashem, next week we'll be able to have full yeah, music already. Full music. That'll that's be good. Yeah. You're ready for see this. What? And you want to keep. And then. Till yes. <laughs> yes, and then who, who are we having here next week? Let me know. We need something with a big DJ. These great big microphones. Yeah, so and I was actually thinking how to Ari Lesser, maybe bringing someone like him or hmm. he's in town. There's a lot of people coming now for Lag Baoma, which we should not fail to mention for this class. And that's. Michael's special merit, Michael Aaron, has come to a special time of year where it's a spirit of hode, it's a more mm. happy time, even though it's also a morning time, sort of in between this mixing. We're now mamish in between yeah. with Pesach Sheini, yeah. we're coming close to Lag Ba'omer. You can already feel the uniqueness in mm -hmm. the air. So. It's almost conflicting. Yes, it is. It is. You want, you, your, your soul wants to burst out with music because yeah. it's Lag Ba'omer, it's Pesach Sheini, and remembering what happened in the base of Mikdash with the Levine singing there. And yet, on the other hand, when Sfer so it's a bit right. confusing. But then again, this is teaches us that our lives are constantly combined of these contradictions. Someone once, I heard once a very good expression, you know, there are these uh, biscuits, like uh, vanilla chocolate, you know, yeah. these mixed things? That's our lives. There's the vanilla, there's the chocolate. You need to learn how to combine them. Amazing. So we're going to go now to uh, our first question. And we will come back to Michael, Aaron, and introduce him a bit more fully in the middle. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. good. And I uh, really enjoyed his song. It's definitely started off the class in the right energy and focus with the Hebrew and the English and the soulful sphere energy. When is the next Garden of Amuna books on loving all people? So that is a very important question because we do have the pamphlet. It's actually one of the last ones in the office right now because they've sold out, thank God. And the Rav's will was after Moran last year and continues to be his will till now. Now, unfortunately, we had 45 souls go up. And the Rav said when he was in the, the Mara, the cave of Lag of Moron, of Rav Shem Bayuchai, and he wasn't sent away like everyone else pretty much was, he was able to be there and he had a revelation that the main issue is a chesor and a lack of Avis Yisrael. And that's what needs to be fixed. So over this last year, he gave many, many classes on loving people, everyone unconditionally, and we put out a few pamphlets. This is, I think, one of the more edited versions in English. And we would love to get it into a book form. That's the questioner's point. And I think that's true. And I think it will come. I do believe they're writing in, in Hebrew and Lashon Kodesh. Yes, they are. It's being written as we speak. So once it's out in Lashon Kodesh and Hebrew, 
we'll hopefully have it translated and of Dain Elgard will uh, let us know if it's a good version because <laughs> he really has the translation in English thank down. Thank you, thank you so much. We'll in other words, blame it, blame it on no, me. No, 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 very good, very good. Clarify that it's good so that our viewers are getting the best quality translation. Uh, Okay. Only meant it in full respect. <laughs> no, no. I'm sure With full love. With full love. Oh. <laughs> Unconditional. Unconditional love. <laughs> so get these pamphlets okay. and keep in touch. Keep giving the love energy and it means a lot to the Rav and keep sending the names. We've got a campaign up there for Lag Boma. Send the names to the Rav. We'll pray for you and keep praying for as much as you can for the love of all people. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So that's the question. So what's the next question? The next question. We're going to the next one. Hey Rabbi Breslov. I have a question. I don't know who Rabbi Breslov is, but I'm sure he's a great guy. So one of the 24 gifts of the Kohenim is five Shkolem for the redemption of a firstborn son. However, what can be redeemed? I know through Tshuva, all can be redeemed, depending on other parts. We see what happens to Aviyu and Nadav, Nadav and Aviyu. They had no chance of redemption or Tshuva. Hashem passes almighty judgment, which is right. But that means someone like Nadav and Aviyu could not be redeemed by Kohenim for five shekels, correct? And when sure, we'd love to know more. Okay, uh, it's a very nice question, but we have to differentiate between two different things. There is a concept which is called in the Torah, redeeming your firstborn son, and that is it manifests in the physical realm by us giving five shkolim to the coin. Now, the reason we redeem the firstborn son is because originally the firstborns, they were supposed to be the ones who would serve in the temple. That's also why at when uh, Am Yisrael left Egypt, the last plague that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Egyptians was a plague of killing the firstborns because that was quid for quo. In other words, those who were supposed to serve in the temple. We lost that opportunity, and now the Kohanim are the ones who serve, so we redeem the firstborn. That is a physical manifestation of redemption. What the person here is asking is about a more spiritual manifestation of redemption, which means that we can redeem our souls. What he wrote about Nadav and Aviv, anyone can redeem their soul. Anyone can do tshuva. Nadav and Aviv could also have done tshuva, but they didn't do tshuva, and that's why they were punished. We can redeem ourselves at all times. We can redeem ourselves by repenting, and by repenting we change our inner essence and we're different people. We can redeem ourselves by praying to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, by thanking Him and by asking for His forgiveness. So one can redeem oneself at any stage of life. To redeem yourself with a Kohani for five shkolim, you have to be a firstborn son. There are different halachic stipulations to how to do that and who can do that. But the inner redemption, which is caused by tshuva, can be done at all times. And the honest truth is that is very fit to the day we're at, which is Pesach Sheni. Because Pesach Sheni teaches us that there's always a second chance. What's the whole story of Pesach Sheni? The whole korban, the sacrifice of Pesach, is the most unique and special sacrifice we have in the whole Torah. Because that is a sacrifice that combined us with Hashem. That was the first sacrifice. It is the sacrifice that defined us as a nation. People who were not pure, who could not actually proceed and be part of the whole process of sacrificing Pesach, came to Moshe Rabbeinu and they said to him, Lama Nigara. Why are we being, not giving the chance of being part of the sacrifice? Why are we losing out? And Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, you're right. It is such an important sacrifice, they're going to get a second chance. And that's why we're celebrating Pesach Sheni. There's always a second chance. You can always redeem yourself, do tshuva, and come back and combine with Hashem. Wow, awesome. So we've got an amazing beginning to our class with Tshuva, Lama Nigo. We, we are hopefully doing that today, Pesach Sheni. We are we're doing Tshuva together, all of us enjoying this second opportunity to bring the light of Pesach to the world. Um, everyone, if you have matzahs, is there a minhag to eat today? Yes, there's many who have the minhag of eating matzahs today. Yeah. And in, uh, do you know that in there's, there's some Hasidu Yotai, for example, in the Devona, the custom is that the Rebbe actually does a whole Seder. Oh wow! He does the whole seder with the four cups of wine and wow, eating wow, the wow. matzah and eating everything. I don't mind having four cups of wine. What? Well, I, I drink grape juice, so it makes no difference. Uh, okay. <laughs> so why should I have matzah instead of pita today? Got it? Mm. What? But that's remember, one of the things remember. we can eat the chametz with the matzah. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know something? You can be makel yeah. today. You even an Ashkenazi, you can have the soft matzahs, the one that look like <laughs> pitas. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to say all the different methods. Yeah. I had have some the soft matzahs. matzahs. What? Machine matzahs. I was in the Shmura. Even though I Do the you know shmura. that every single year mm. on Pesach, in the hospitals, okay, 
nose in throat doctors mm. they are all on alert because you always have people who eat the hard cracked matzah oh, they eat it too yeah. fast yeah. and they tend to hurt themselves <laughs> oh, that's yeah. emergency time so you can eat the soft matzahs you take the pita okay, good, you roll good it in one. more healthy and enjoy today. yourself yes yeah. less health risks um the second question oh, actually the last question for today from our viewers i'm wondering if you can answer a question for me um it's some if someone's luck or muzzle that determines if they marry and stay married but not just to get married and be miserable but to be happily married versus someone who gets married and is miserable what does that depend on if anything is it prayer luck bracha blessings what could it be uh, please please explain thank you very much okay first of all we need to explain what mazel is mazel is a spiritual power which affects every single creature on this planet but the difference between us and other people is is that the gomorrah at the end of tractate shabbos says that you can always change the power of mazel mazel is a power but you can change it through prayer you can always pray and change your mazel so nothing is predetermined it depends on you so whether you get married or don't get married even though there is a power called mazel you can change it through your prayers once you get married whether your husband is perfect for you whether we're talking here about two soulmates that are completely compatible or not may be dependent on mazel but you can change it because people can change through prayer so even though we do have different powers spiritual powers affecting our daily lives you can change everything through prayer through tzedakah through doing good deeds to others and once you do that you can change your mazel so good luck with changing it yeah and we'd recommend as well the gan of shalom the garden of peace as well for anyone in the marriage story um definitely or gan of of brisi shalom the, the the garden of purity. purity these books in english recommend very much women's wisdom They're very important the rav always pushed whenever i was with him in his meetings that these books are the key to guide you towards a happy marriage and they are uh, unbelievable books but the key factor is you've yeah. got to learn them oh. not just read them it's not a yeah. reading book That it's was a learning book. That was the, the point that Nissen Black, when he came here, said, and his brother-in-law as well, Nissen Brown, said to me personally, that it's actually about application. It's not just about reading. Exactly. That's the rubber's pointing out. People are very so, good at reading today, but they're very yeah. bad at applying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wish more reading would be going on. You read a lot nowadays, or it's more online stuff? I mean, I, I love mm. a good book. Okay, I mean, good. I will, I, I mean, I've read, I've read so many books so many times, but I, I prefer the, feeling of the page than an online book mm, no okay good so that me. brings us to introduce you michael Aaron. yes um i am an author uh i the first book i wrote i was i was well i was 13 and i mean it wasn't very good i, I was 13 <laughs> but uh that's what really got me into the world of writing shall we say and now complete tangent this will be important i promise uh Rick Riordan is the author of the very well acclaimed Percy Jackson series, very good series, very good author. Um, and he wrote a bunch of different books on different mythologies, like apply them into the modern world. And his fans always asked, oh, hey, Rick Riordan, why don't you do a book on this mythology or that mythology? And he always said, I, I don't know those mythologies and I don't want to misrepresent them. So he created a publishing house called Rick Riordan Presents, where other authors who are from those backgrounds can write those books and then he publishes them. Now, I love Rick Riordan and I wanted to write a book that he could publish. And then I started thinking, okay, I'm not Aztec, I'm not Hindu, I'm not Korean, I'm definitely Mesopotamian. What book can I write about? <laughs> and then it hit me. To us, we know that what happened in the Torah, these are real events, these are our history. But to the outside world, the secular world, these are stories, myths, if you will. So I said, I'm going to write a Jewish book. And so my mythology story stars 12-year-old Caleb Benson, who discovers that he is the descendant of Moshe Rabbeinu. He acquires Moshe's staff, and he can do whatever Moshe did in Tanakh, whether it's splitting the sea or the ten plagues. And so he teams up with the descendants of other Jewish mythological figures, and they go ahead and they fight the Jewish enemies like Amalek and, and whatnot. So the book is in its final stages of editing now, and I'm trying to get in contact with Rick Riordan and, and Rick Riordan Presents to get this book published, and that is, um, that's where I'm at right now. And how did we meet? We met in a frat, is that yes. right? Yes, uh, we met when 
uh, you, you came over for Shabbat, mm -hmm. and I showed you the book I wrote when I was 13. It was terrible, but your kids liked it, so that was good. Um, uh, I sang a few songs. Uh, it was good. You, you and my father bonded, and then you came back a second well, time. What was special with the songs? Because you have a power to present songs about music, like Disney. And, I, I do a lot yeah. of Disney songs, that's for yeah. sure. Um, right now, I wasn't the right place to sing them, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for Disney music, that's for sure. So, and then we, I introduced you to Saul Blinkoff. Yes, Saul yeah. Blinkoff. Yeah. Um, if you don't, if you don't know, Saul Blinkoff is an animator at Disney. Uh, Rabbi Ellie Goldsmith recently um, began to work as his what events manager around Just that. Helping him, uh, booking helping him out. Hope, yeah, I'm looking to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. He uh, he introduced me to Saul Blinkoff. I now listen to his podcast, Life of Awesome. Great podcast. You can check it out if you want. Um, but, yeah. So he, he would be a good link up to get someone, a new generation of Amuna spiritual, but at the same time towards where the generation is at, which is a very, this is a very popular field, what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the Marvel world and the 100%. superheroes. It's something which kids are crazy about now. I'm crazy about it. <laughs> so yeah, the point is, how can we get it, once again, as we mentioned last week, towards a spiritual focus, a Muna focus, a Muna global? How do we bridge those gaps to the new generations so we're not just talking about Torah, Rabbonim, and Siddiquim, and it's not unfortunately being relatable to the new generation yeah so that is my goal with my yeah. book series i plan to bring the learning and uh the mishnah and the Gemara and the stories of uh judaism in a modern style that everyone jewish non-jewish secular alike they can all enjoy it amazing okay so we thank again the father yosef aaron and we hope to host him again he has a beautiful voice your father especially on the Shabbos Nagunim and mm -hmm. with the Kiddush and Avdala, we'll have to bring him back at some point. And uh, he's away right now. so He's in America, yeah. yes. So we'll hopefully have that opportunity again. But we are very um, amazed and impressed that you have the brave and brave bravery and the courage to come here by yourself and do this. So thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What is so special about the Disney music? I mean, it's just that, first off, I grew up on Disney music. So it's like a song almost my childhood is disney but also i mean just it's it's innocent i mean sure you have your adult jokes in disney movie that's a whole other topic but just disney itself where dreams come true and where anything is possible if you wish upon a star i mean i just it like the dreams that they achieve help us to realize we can achieve our dreams would you think that there's a good disney song that would be relevant for this program yeah he has one so Dreamworks. Not Disney, Dreamworks. but DreamWorks, Saul Blinkoff also worked on DreamWorks. Anyways, so while Disney has not made any Jewish movies, I plan on fixing that, by the way, that's a whole other topic. Um, DreamWorks has made two Jewish-themed movies, The Prince of Egypt and Joseph, King of Dreams. Both fantastic movies. Their soundtracks rival any Disney movie easily. Um, and, I ha and later, I'm going to be singing a song from DreamWorks movie, The Prince of Egypt. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's to look forward to. Yes. We're going to get to that. So stick around for the rest of the class. Nice. Right now that we've had our beautiful intro with Michael, we'd like to now go to the Rav and get back to the focus of Ben Amal Havera and, and the Rav will guide us exactly with like Boma coming up, Oof. what he'd like to discuss. Today. Well, actually, th this is also very relevant to what we spoke about Pesach Sheni. Oh, I'd, like I'd like to give you a small focus about Lag Omer, something which many people are not aware of. Lag Omer is not only the day where we celebrate the festivity of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it's also the day where we celebrate the festivity of his rabbi and his mentor, Rabbi Akiva. Now, there are a few reasons for that. We're just going to give one reason. Rabbi Tzadok writes in his book, Pre Tzadik on Lag Omer, in the first section, Rabbi Akiva, as we know, was killed by the Roman regime. At that time, by the Roman Empire, he was considered to be a traitor to the throne. And he was executed. The day he was executed was, was on Yom Kippur. Now, of course, all of his students, they wanted to commemorate his memory. They wanted to light a candle, remember their rabbi who passed away. The Romans refused to allow that. From their point of view, he was a traitor. And any memory of a traitor whatsoever was something forbidden and punishable by death. So what did his students do? They combined his day of memory with the same day 
of his greatest student, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So even though Rabbi Akiva didn't pass away on Lag Omer, nevertheless that day served as a double memory day, both for Rabbi Akiva, the rabbi, and for the student, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So Lag Omer is very much also about Rabbi Akiva. So we need to learn from Rabbi Akiva a message. There are many messages. Today we're going to concentrate on one. And I'd like to start with the first story. The Gemara in Tractate Yuvomus, in page 62, second page, says that Rabbi Akiva had 24,000 students, and they all died between Pesach and Lag Ba'omer. The Mary says in the name of the Goinim, we have a tradition, they passed away, it took them 32 days to die. Now, let's calculate it. 24,000 divided by 32. How much does that work out? Oh, Lord. Okay, I, n- I would never get at math. Okay. 750. Sure. Thank now, you. Can you imagine, <laughs> try and imagine this. Imagine a rabbi who has 24,000 students oh, who every single day, 750 of them die. Now, on Shabbos, you can't bury them. So that means that on Sunday, we have 1,500 Levias funerals. Now, what do you think this does to a rabbi when he sees thousands of his students dying away? Like, like dying, sorry for, the, for, the, for, 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 for trying to compare it this, but it would be the phrase would be dying away like flies. I mean, what do you think this does to him? This will tear up a normal person. I mean, I remember how I felt last year after Miron. It was a really terrible crisis for me, just for losing the students that we lost. I also, unfortunately, was sent by, well, not unfortunately, this was what I said. I was sent to Abu Kabir to identify the people who passed away, which was also a hideous thing to do, and I hope I will never have to do it again in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about here someone who every single day attends 750 funerals. A normal person, what would he do? He'd give up. Finished. You know, enough's enough. Finished. 24,000 students of mine have died. I've just now buried them all. I don't have the koch to continue anymore. I am quitting. I'm not teaching anymore. And the Gemara there says, Rabbi Akiva didn't quit. He didn't despair. He didn't give up. He went again and he chose five students who lived down south. One of them was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And he started all over again. He started teaching them again. And they became the pillars of Torah who eventually taught Torah to all of Am Yisrael. One of the biggest lessons, we're going to give a few more examples during this year that we can learn from Rabbi Akiva, is never give up. And that is very, very parallel to Pesach Sheini. There's always a second chance. Never give up. You can always do it again. Is it the yacht site of Rabbi Balanes today? Today is the yacht site also of another one of Rabbi Akiva's great students, Rabbi Meir Balanes. And that is the tradition. Today is his yacht site. Many people now go to Tveria, to Rabbi Meir Balanes's Holy resting place. Beautiful place out there. Yes, it's very beautiful there. And Rabbi Meir also, it's the same concept. He was one of the five students that Rabbi Akiva passed on the Torah to them. The Gemara so much so says in Tractate Sanhedrin on page 86, the Gemara there says that Stam Mishnah, whenever there's a Mishnah which doesn't have any name in it, who said it? Rabbi Meir. And the Gemara there says, and everything Rabbi Meir got from who did he get it from? From Rabbi Akiva. Which is all the Torah that we have today. The Mishnah, the Zohar, everything. Everything comes from Rabbi Akiva. Unbelievable. Wow. So one of the books that really um, stuck out to me, like growing in Yiddishkeit when I came back to, to Judaism, to Torah, mitzvahs, and started learning, was there was a book about Akiva. It was just called Akiva. And these kind of books really affected me, like reading stories about the Tanayim and the Siddiquim and all the Sipurim Siddiquim. They, they really affected my nefesh, my soul. Like which is a, than, which is a wonderful story yeah. for someone who's starting to do tshuva at an yeah. older age. Yeah, I mean, also. I mean, what was the story, Rabbi Akiva? Yeah. Rabbi Akiva, until the age of forty, he didn't know anything. Not only didn't know anything, he hated Talmud Chachamim so much. He says in the Gemara in Psachim, in page forty nine, he used to say to his students, "When I was an Amaretz, when I didn't know how to learn, if I if I was brought a Talmud Chacham, I'd like to bite him the way a donkey bites someone." So his student says to him, you know, Rabbi, if you're talking about biting, a dog bites. Why are you saying a donkey? He says, no. Nah. He says, when a dog bites, he doesn't break the bones. When a donkey bites, he crushes the bones. And I hated them so much. I wanted to crush their wow. bones. I mean, he hated them. And look at what he became. Yeah, wasn't he the one who wrote Klau Gadol B'Torah, the after Yes, and he's the one who wrote Ze Klau Gadol B'Torah, Ve Hafta Leracha Kamocha. He spoke about Avas Yisrael, especially after what happened to his students. And it was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai who writes in the Zohar, Anan Bechavivuta Talia, we are whole, our, Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was mending the sin of Tamir Rabbi Akiva. So he says, all of our, our, our main aspect, what unites us together is the love between us. 
So this is, again, this, everything is combining together. Avas Yisroel, don't despair, second chance. Tshuva, repenting, starting again. Wow. Yes. And being that we're like coming up to Kabbalah Satoira, can the Rav give us some, some inspiration to get us more inspired this week and in the coming weeks? <sighs> okay, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Let's, you know something? Let's mm-hmm. tell the story again of Rabbi Akiva and see what we can do from Torah. In Avod Rabbi Natan, in chapter 6, it says that how Rabbi Akiva started learning Torah. He was 40 years old, and do you know what he did? He went to the Cheder. Okay? We're talking here about, what, what are we talking about here? Not even kindergarten, we're talking about here. Pre-kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Preschool. And preschool. And he sat mm-hmm. with his son, and they were learning together the Aleph base. Mm-hmm. Now, can you imagine, imagine now you have a class, okay, of three, four-year-olds, and suddenly a 40-year-old guy comes in to learn the Aleph base. Okay, first of all, all the parents are going to go, whoa, 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 what is this? You know, <laughs> is, is this being scrutinized? Is everything okay? Is, is it safe? All the red who flags. Is this, who is the weirdo who's sitting here at the age of 40 and learning the Aleph base? Yeah. But Rabbi Akiva wasn't embarrassed. He wasn't embarrassed. And that's one of the most important things about receiving the Torah. Don't be embarrassed. Just start learning. Hashem will open up the gates for you. You don't understand. There's so many shurim today. There's so many shurim on different levels. There's so many things yeah. that you can connect to through the media, through the YouTube, through Instagram, through all the different platforms. Don't be embarrassed. The most important thing to do is connect to the Torah and just start learning and learn that from Rabbi Akiva. I mean, I experienced that when I came in at 18, 19. I couldn't even read Aleph base properly. And I got married when I was 21. And I was asked all the time to lead the benching. And I was a Cohen. And I was a Hossin. And I was newly married. I wanted to make a good impression on my wife. My wife was, like, cringing when it came to that because she saw I'd make a few mistakes here and there. You know, the about Shuva jokes, you know, and they're saying it to, to someone who's, in, who's an oval. You know, they get all the, all the, th- the wrong saying, sayings, Blinada, they're saying to, like, you know, um, at, at a Simcha, you know, if someone says Mazda, Blinada, you know, what? <laughs> they get everything confused. So I was about to like in the benching and it, it was very embarrassing. My wife was more traditional so she knew the pronunciation and she actually taught me like to clear, clearly pronounce the benching and because I'm Muslim, so I could bench Hashem publicly in a, in a more mechubbed way. But it, I had those moments, you know, where it was very embarrassing, the lack of knowledge, the lack of tradition and you had to sort of sit it out and go through it and feel that embarrassment and feel that lack and sitting in front of Menalim and et cetera, et cetera, going to all these situations. And not yeah. giving up. Yeah. Not falling into despair. Sure. Yeah. Even when people didn't behave themselves, you know. Yes, you know, there's the famous joke. You know the joke about yeah. the Balchuva and the Shul, yeah? Balchuva is invited. He, he comes to Shul one of the first mm-hmm. times after he did Shuva. And, he, and the Gabbai says to him, Oh, Shalom Aleichem, we're so happy to see a new face. I'd like to give you, to honor you doing something in Shul. He says to him, listen, listen. He says, I'm, I'm really new. I'm really fresh at this. Please. Don't do, give me anything. I don't know how to say the brochas yet properly. Don't embarrass you. The guy by says to him, don't worry, I'm going to give you something very simple. It's called glila. All you've got to do is you've got to roll the Sefer Torah and just tie it with a string. That's all. Okay, so the Baal Tshuva is eventually called up and he comes and he does glila and the guy by standing next to him and he puts and he, he rolls the scrolls of the Sefer Torah and he ties it and then he puts on the special clothing, the special garment of the Sefer Torah and then he starts walking down and then everyone starts screaming to him. The crown, the crown. Now, the Sefer Torah has a beautiful crown, which you put it on. He doesn't know what they're talking about. They're saying, they're the crown on the bimmer. Okay, so he takes the crown, and what are you supposed to do with it? And they say to him, put it on, put it on. So he puts it on his head. <laughs> okay, now, having the guts of coming to shul after doing such a thing, when no one will ever forget that, that is Rabbi Akiva. That is the message for Shavuos, for Torah, for Lag Ba'omer, for Pesach Sheni. Don't give up doesn't matter how embarrassing it is. Don't give up. Searching for truth. That's the... Searching for truth. Right. Yes. Amazing. Okay, so we'll, uh, Michael, you came to move to Eretz as well, and you're going to sing for us at some point. I don't know if it's right. The moment's ready now. No idea. But um, what's it been like to move? It's not an easy move, is it? Because we've had others. I mean... Yes. Aiton Katz spoke about it. You know, Summer Katz was like your Rav and your Kahila. He's like, oh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, you know, very, very strong about Aaliyah. But Aiton Katz's brother... Not so much, you know, it's, it's been challenging. He moved back to America. So there's different, you know, yesh for yesh, different people, yeah, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, 
I'm not afraid to say it. When I, when I was first told I was moving to Israel, I said, nope, I'm staying here. My friends are here. My school is here. My life is here. I'm not moving. And then I moved. <laughs> so, um, so for the first, I'd say, a month, it was a whole mess. Uh, I wasn't taking it well. My brother definitely wasn't taking it well. And then school started. And I went to a certain school. I'm not going to say the name. It was an hour and a half each way. The teachers, the kids, I, it was too much. I couldn't. I I went nuts. And eventually, I was taken out of the school. But now, I'm in a better place. Mm -hmm. And I can see Israel for what it is, essentially. I mean, when I first came, I was like, oh, eh, there's this problem. And there's this problem. It's not like America. But it's yeah, one, does, one does have to mention the biggest problem is you can't find Dr. Pepper in the stores. It's very difficult. So what's funny? In a frat, you can. So, but no, it's funny. <laughs> I don't drink salt. I don't drink like like fizzy soda, mm. nothing like that. So I, my problem is public transportation. I've never done it before. And it was, I have a problem with a lot of people in close proximity. So when I have to get onto a bus for 45 run. minutes. Let me run. <laughs> <laughs> lots of people close proximity. Not this yes. year, though, unfortunately. Uh, this year it's also going to be lots of people close proximity, just not that many people. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope not. Yeah. But um, uh, so we need to get on a bus. I get on a bus for forty-five minutes. I wanted to just fly out of there. Just I didn't know what to do. I was having like mini panic attacks. Like, what's going on? Mm. I don't know what to do. Do I talk to someone? Do I not talk to someone? Oh. It was it was a mess. But thankfully, I've I've gotten better now. Amazing. And especially buses from Efrat, oh, which are special buses, mm. which are what's called protected and safeguard mm. but the heavy ones, and it's so hot in those mm. buses. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. And even when the air condition is on no, full, you're and, like... Oh, yeah. And even I have a problem with the heat, yeah. so I you got full force, and then also yeah. there's 50 people sitting in a the seat, there's one next to you, and there's one on the other side of you, and one in front of you, and back of you, and you want to go, go crazy. <laughs> so this, this brings us to this week's Pasha, Baha in Chutzlaretz, or we just lamed Baha here in Eretz Yisrael, we just read Baha about Shemitah and the Eretz HaKodesh, the Holy Land, that has a special holiness, the seventh year and the seventh land, of Shabbos, it's a Shabbosdika land, and then at the same time, Pasha's Bukhu Kosai, and we'll be reading this Shabbos, and that's preparing us to be Messiah, and Vayikra, and Chazak Chazak, and Chazak, and the for Varachim, for Chodesh Sivan. Is that correct? This Shabbos or is it next Shabbos? This Shabbos, next Shabbos. Next Shabbos, Shabbos after. So, but it's already getting ready for this special time, you know, with Messiah time, Persichin, if people talk about that. The special gates are open, yeah, of purity during this week. Um, with all these different levels of energy and spiritual energy, how does the Rav, like, explain, like, in the Pasha, and how does it relate to us with the... Kabbalah to Torah and the holiness of Eretz Yisrael and Lag Ba'omer. There's a lot of energy and light right now. What? How do we deal with it and well, analyze it? First of all, I'd like to say a big shkoyach yeah. to Michael and his family for making yeah. Aliyah. That's it's, yes. It's not easy. It's not it's easy. Not. It was not. But it's not. But the best place for a yid to live in is in Eretz Yisrael. Even if it's difficult, it is the best place. This is our homeland. This is our holy country. And you can see from the passage that we just read, there's so many mitzvahs, so many commandments that we need to do. You can only do them in Eretz Yisrael. The Ari, the holy Ari, which he was, one could say, the person who took the teachings of Rashbi and he simplified them in such a way that have now become part of the whole world. He is, in a sense, the one who all Hasidus nurtures and, 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 and derives from the Ari. The Ari said that our soul needs to do all these mitzvahs in order to complete ourselves. And if you don't do them, you've got to come back again and again and again until you do. So this is one wonderful thing about living in Eretz Yisrael. You have many opportunities of doing here things that you cannot do in Chutz Laaretz, which is a great gift. Wow. Now, Get receiving also the Torah. That's also part of the whole concept of receiving the Torah and being an Eretz Yisrael. The Torah is the Torah of Eretz Yisrael. So many things are related to Eretz Yisrael. Of course, one has to also preserve the Torah in Chutz Laaretz, but still, living in Chutz Laaretz and living in the Torah is, one could say, a certain way, in a certain way, it's a bit of a shade of what you have here in Eretz Yisrael. Here is the real thing. Here's the real stuff. For example, look at Shemitah. People, we are now in the middle of Shemitah. Beha, Pashas Beha speaks about Shemitah. Now, we cope with it on a daily basis. 
we've got to go to special stores. We pay very expensive prices for all the agricultural produce that we consume. These are things that people who are living in Chutzas are not even aware of. They know it's Shemitah year, but it doesn't affect their lives in any way whatsoever. We live it here in Shemitah. Things that we can't do. We can't even buy a new flower pot and put it outside in our garden or in our porch because you're not supposed to do that in Shemitah. So many things that we live the Torah here in Nazi Israel. That's one of the most beautiful gifts I can say that Michael and his family, the whole Aaron family, have gotten by coming here to Nazi Israel. Yeah, they're also ourselves. not just living here, but they're also bringing a Muna. Uh, I mean, your father's, how many books does he have of the Rav Arish? Too many for me to count. <laughs> Hundreds, of, giving them out to the whole community there in Afra and beyond. And everyone who comes, he hosts. How many people have these Shabbos usually? At least like yeah. five, six. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they're, they're going to get a free book of Rav Arish. So he's really doing the Shlichus, your father and family and the mother as well together. And, and you were also in the an unbelievable Kehillah. Yeah. Your rabbi, Rabbi uh, Katz, Katz, unbelievable. He's, I'm a cat. He Holy is, man. He is, he is, he's unbelievable. He is an, he's an energy. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, I don't, what, 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 what do you call him? I don't know. This energy There's boost. There's just power. some like aspect of him that makes you want to like, I don't, I don't dance. I never could two left feet. I go to Friday night show. I want to get up and yell to the, to the, yell to the rooftops. Wow. He's unbelievable. Rabbi sure. Katz. Really unbelievable. And yeah, we'd love to have him back here again. We had a few classes of him together during these 71 classes. He came in the, one of the big first classes and in the middle somewhere. And it was a big honor to have him here in the studio. Yes, it was. As well as your father and yourself. So um, I think we, we're going to do your song. Is that okay? You ready? Sure, yeah. And then... Um, is, this, is this a DreamWorks song? This yes. is a DreamWorks song. Okay, very good. And since right. it's about... You explain a little bit what the song's about mm-hmm. and then it will hopefully link up with how we'll complete the shir with Ravel God. Please go. Yeah, so actually, uh, aligning with Pesach Shani a bit, um, this song comes from the DreamWorks movie, The Prince of Egypt. It's the first song in the movie in which the Jews are enslaved in Egypt and they are crying for Hashem to save them or to deliver them. Uh, and um, uh, partway through the song, we have a lullaby where Yochever and Miriam put Moshe into the Nile River. And it's a nice sweet moment. Here we go. Okay. With the sting of the whip on my shoulder, with the salt of my sweat on my brow, Elohim, God on high, can you hear your people cry? Help us now, this dark hour. Deliver us, hear our call, deliver us. Lord of all, remember us here in this burning sand. Deliver us, there's a land you promised us. Deliver us to the promised land. Yaldiya tov v'hala, al tira ve'al tifchad. My son, I have nothing I can give. But this chance that you may live, I pray we'll meet again. If he will deliver us, he will pray, deliver us. For these famished years of slavery grow too cruel to stand. Deliver us, there's a land you promised us. Deliver us out of bondage and... Deliver us to the promised land. And now this part we go into the lullaby. Hush now, my baby, be still, love, don't cry. Sleep as you're rocked by the stream. Sleep and remember my last lullaby. So I'll be with you when you dream. River, oh river, flow gently for me. Such precious cargo you bear. Do you know somewhere he can be free? 
river, deliver him there. Brother, you're safe now, and safe may you stay, for I have a prayer just for you. Grow, baby brother, come back someday, come and deliver us too. Deliver us, send a shepherd to shepherd us, and deliver us to the promised land. Deliver us. Wow. Amazing. That's a beautiful song. It's a very good song. A beautiful song. Yes. And to do it without any music. It was so very, very nice. It took some finagling, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a beautiful song. Good job, beautiful Michael. words. I like the words. Yeah. And this is part of a film? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So. Not bad. Part of a PG-rated film. It's good. You should definitely watch it. There is some spirituality movie. out there, even in DreamWorks. It's like uh, a kid's film. Guardian, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Parent guarding? Guardian. Uh, yeah. Parental, uh, Guardian. parental, guard. yeah, you, basically, like, yeah, it's a kid's film, basically. Very nice. It's appropriate for yeah. children. Nice. Maybe for all children, for all of us. <laughs> Not yeah. which, is, no, which is really what we're asking for. We want yeah. Hashem to deliver us. Yeah. Oh, Hashem, we've had enough. We want yeah. Mashiach. We want Pesach. We want to sacrifice today. To the promised Pesach. land. Shani, here in the promised land. This is what we want. We mm. want to be able, Lama Nigora. Why should we not have a second chance? We want to go to the base of Mekdash and we want to sacrifice Korban Pesach amen. with Melech HaMashiach and with the Kohanim. Amen, amen. Amen. Oh. Beautiful. We felt that in the song. Thank you. Very special. My pleasure. Wow. To have the strength and courage to do that. It's, uh, we should, and especially, you know, you're, you're teenagers, correct? Yeah. 17. 17. So have the, you know, the, the confidence. It's a good age. Yeah. 17 in the numerical value of 17 is 12, 12. a good age. <laughs> so, and we hope you'll be successful with the book and your, your creative outlets and everything. Thank you. And living in the Holy Land. I mean, I mean, because it, it, it's a wonderful way of attracting youth to Emuna through a story and through mythology, which so many people connect to today. Amazing. So, Rav, we'll just sign, let's end off the share with some just chizuk because like Baum is coming up, there's big lights in the world right now. And uh, thank God we have a Rav who's, as a shleich of Rav Shalom Orish, giving over some energy for us so we can have the strength during these Sura days to get the Kenyan, the Torah, to get the acquisitions we need to become the best we can be to help us. Well, I'm going to dedicate the time to speak about uh, a good friend of mine who passed away last year, Rabbi uh, Moshe Tzofati of Blessed Memory. He was one of the 45 Holy Spirits who passed away in Meron. Now, anyone who knew Rabbi Moshe knew that his life story was not simple. He went through a very, very challenging lifestyle, but he was a fighter. I mean, he was a real fighter. He was a warrior. He never, ever let himself fall down. And even when he fell, the first thing he did is he used to raise himself right up again. He used to sit and learn and do mitzvahs and go out, even though when I remember he was in pain and he went through corona very badly, he became very weak. He would never, ever give up and one of the most unique things about him was his Avas Yisrael was like, like unbelievable I mean yeah <laughs> look this is it's not the kind of thing you do to a rabbi you know a rabbi is still it's a, it's a quite a it, it's a different status and he used to come to the midrash and used to see me and used to go rabbi I love you and he used to run and like what <laughs> lift me up <laughs> now which is not that easy okay I'm, a, I'm not I'm not I'm not a featherweight <laughs> warrior okay and he's gonna pick me up and he's like, his Avas Yisrael was bursting from him. And I think that that is a thing that's connected to Lagba Omer and to Shavuos and to everything that we're going through. You can't differentiate and you can't separate between the love of Torah and the love of Am Yisrael. Those are two things which are united. The Zohar says that Kudshabrichu ve'oraita v'Yisrael chadhem. Hashem and the Torah and Am Yisrael, we're all one thing. We're all intertwined. Yeah. And you could see that through Rabbi Moshe Tzofati's life. Amazing. His love for Torah, his love for Am Yisroel. And he, he's someone who, who I, I personally, I really, I miss him a lot. 
And we've got to take these messages and learn them, especially now when we're coming up to Lag Ba'omi, his first Yotzeit. Remember, you want to be part of the Torah? Be part of Amisro. You're part of Amisro, you'll be part of the Torah. Those things are always connected together. Wow, amazing. That's such a beautiful way to end this 71st class. We had the wonderful Michael Aaron sing to us and tell us his wonderful book. Please, God, we're looking forward to join you again in the new week after the light of Lag Boma has hopefully lit up the world with good news this year. Amen. 5772 seven, seven, 2022. Please, God. And I also remember uh, Nissen Black talking very fondly of uh, Moshe Safati. I had a chavusa with him. Yeah, they were good friends. And there was examples. You're just bringing everybody close. So we miss these holy souls, but their legacy and their energy lives on. We dedicate this class to their memory. And we please, God, we wish comfort and and simchas to the families and all of our Misra and all the world should join together. Please go to the new week with only good news and Mashir Sakani Bimhaven Mainu Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's deliver us. Brilliant. Very nice. Where do you live in uh, 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 uh,